Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9 and on today's video we will have a teardown of a vintage CCTV Vidicon camera from the 1980s. Since we're stuck indoors we might as well. So hello and welcome to the <coughs> Oh we've already done that spiel. So to take apart its camera Let's first take off the lens, which is your standard CCTV mount. Now, any of you who watched Big Clive's video about the big, like, multi-camera dome units, um, I will actually throw a picture into the video, if I remember, in editing of what the ones in Sainsbury's, uh, in a local Sainsbury's I used to go to when I was a kid, looked like. Only that the ones in my supermarket were beige, but these are basically the cameras that were mounted inside them. And it was usually just one camera and then the rest were dummy lenses, so standard sort of lens for the period. I'm going to apologise about the focus because it's only manual. You might be able to see the iris mechanism, though you can't. That's a shame. Because of my iris mechanism in this is pretty damn awesome. Oh. Now it's very difficult to get the iris mechanism to show up. But this one has zoom lens. It's, t it's an antimatic TV zoom lens. Uh, F2.8 is the maximum. No, F2. So we'll pop him over here by the uh, photomultiplier tube. Move the camera roughly into where it is in focus. There we go. And at the front, you've got the front of the sensor, which is, of course, a black and white Vidicon tube. A red LED is actually under here, and then this would be your autofocus, and not autofocus, but auto iris. Under this cover is a little um, screw that actually allows you to adjust the focusing of the actual Vidicon tube itself. There's some foam in here which hasn't perished to oblivion somehow. And the rest of the deal is just to undo three screws. Now there's two circuit boards in this thing. Also uses a really old school style video connector as well. On, off. Uh, standard composite output. This is black and white, and yes, it does still work. I actually tested it when I dug it out the shed, like literally. I think it was after work one uh, last week because I'm on permanent work from home, so I don't have all the commuting nonsense to do anymore, which just makes life so much better. I like working from home, it's fun, it's nice, it's nice having my time back. So you take it off, there's actually quite a few tripod mounts on this thing. There's one on the top there so you can mount it to the ceiling. I'm going to pop you down there and on the bottom there's two, one at the front for if you have a very heavy lens on the front and one in the middle which is more closer to the centre of gravity but not as act. So we have two main boards here, and of course the actual Vidicon tube assembly itself, power transformer for a linear power supply, and we basically have, this is the video board, it's where the um, actual, you can just about see it in there, that little black wire, that will hopefully be visible on the camera, but the little grey wire goes into the video front end amplifier at this end. And this end actually drives the um, Vidicon tube. This board, I'm going to see. I haven't actually taken these boards out before, so I'm, we're going to see if they actually come out. But the nice thing is, is there's uh, some adjustment pots in that, and they're all labelled, which is beautiful. Gain, AGC, PED. TLIM, a lot of you who do the TV stuff will um, understand the terminology. VLIN, I think that's vertical linear pot. Height, 12 volt point. They've actually got a lot of markings on showing out. 
That was not an electrical shop. I just got stabbed by the sharp solder pins. I could have used this as part of the security cameras I put up because I've actually got the monitor mounted on the wall up there and working. Like literally in that direction. I've just got to keep an eye on the rear screen because I don't actually have a monitor at my um, workbench yet. I might mount a monitor on the wall in front of me so then I can uh, use that. So yeah, this looks like it might actually um, give us some visibility. <coughs> now I do not understand the specifics of how all the analog shenanigans works. In, in fact, I can't even find anything online for about this uh, particular unit. So I'll unplug him. Then, there we go, it's got a little bit extra room to see in there, but not a huge amount. It's mostly all transistorized at this end. Looking at how it goes, it's where all the uh, power stuff is, basically. Even looks like there's a little switch mode power supply in there, by the looks of that little transformer. And then on the other side... There's the shielding for the video amplifier. There's a whole bunch of ICs, which are probably going to be... How easy will this come apart? You never do know until you try, do you? I don't really want to rip this thing completely apart. But I do want to fold the boards out so you can actually see them. Yeah, but the thing is with video con tubes, because they've got a very high impedance output, they have to have the video amplifier basically right on the front target of the tube. I'm not going to go into how video con cameras work, because it's an incredibly complex subject that I suggest you just do some extra... Re oh, this one's the same bloody problem as... Oh, no, I can get it out a little more. So you can see where the video... Yeah, let's do that. See where the video goes in. I hope that's in. Yes, that's good enough. And we haven't got any warnings about overheating. So you can see there's quite a few video chips in this driver chip. Surprisingly, there doesn't seem to be a delay line of any sort in here, which is quite common in a lot of video equipment. So you've got what is probably the main amplifier chip based on its location to the main amplifier. You've got the main amplifier transistor there. Then you've got a whole bunch of auxiliary uh, chips. There's actually a number of MC140011 b chips. I will have to Google what they are. Date codes of 8036, 8036, 8033. So this is really early 80s. This is older than any of my vintage computers in my collection. But it shows these will go back into the 70s and probably even 60s. You got a RES. This is at the point where it would be really useful to understand what all that. But I'm not sure quite what these chips are. I'm guessing they're going to be... Well, 14,000 logic would be uh, a good guess. Now this would be a good time to have a laptop on me. Hang on. So... 14001. Shut up, phone. 14001. I swear I recognise that as some sort of NAND chip. My gut was right. They're NOR gates. Quad input NOR gates. Not quad input. Quad NOR gates with two inputs each. Okay, you're just going to have to Google that bitch yourselves because I don't know. It's not coming up on the standard... Uh, CMOS logic like I thought it would be. But that's pretty much it.
apart from showing you the guts. I can't really tell you a lot about how it works because I don't really understand a lot about ele analog electronics. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, found that interesting. Link to Big Clive's videos to the sort of uh, camera system this would have come out of will be found below and I'm going to get back to putting this back together. Oh look, you got a width adjustment. But yeah, this seems to be very much the CRT board, whereas this is the video generation board. And unsurprisingly, the um, video cable will no doubtably end up going somewhere over here. But yeah, thanks for watching.